Hudson County View live and uncut. And I'm the man of the hour, too sweet to be sour. The women's pet and the men's regret. But what you see is what you get, and what you don't is better yet. John Arhitis. And, uh, you know, look, obviously a lot of interesting topics from election night. I mean, obviously, of course, the big one is we uh, have a new president elect, and we knew that that was going to be the case with President Joe Biden not seeking re election. But actually, for just the second time in the history of our country, we have a president that is serving two non consecutive terms. And, of course, you know by now that that is Donald Trump. And he beat Kamala Harris pretty handily, despite all the pollsters and pundits telling us that this was going to be a nail biter and it's going to take days to see a call, so on and so forth. So obviously that's a pretty big story in and of itself. And um, as we go down the ballot that we had here in Hudson County, all of the congressional representatives won, though uh, a surprisingly tight race in the ninth district. So we'll, we'll touch on that for a moment. But, you know, the electoral uh, side, you know, we saw a big upset of the Jersey City Board of Education race. That has some uh, big implications for Ward E. Councilman James Solomon, who came out for the opposition, who ended up winning, so we'll chat about that. Also going to talk about that red control referendum in Hoboken. Of course, that ended up losing very decisively. And uh, also, you know, really just awful, awful news out of Hoboken with Council President Jen Giottino passing away suddenly at just 52 years old. And, you know, I still can't believe it. I'm still gutted over it, but going to do my best to talk to you about it. And... Uh, our guest today will be Jersey City mayoral candidate Musa Ali. So all that and a whole lot more right after this word from our sponsors. No one plans on heart disease but everyone should have a plan for it. We help patients of all lifestyles and medical histories plan for healthy hearts. We offer convenient screenings without judgment, hundreds of preventive programs, and women's heart specialists. And we're the largest cardiac surgery program in New Jersey. Make plans for a healthy heart with RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River offers a quality of life you deserve in one of our many high-rise towers. With amenities such as the on-site Newport Path, Light Rail, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Kohl's, J.C. Penney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams and Acme Supermarket are just outside your front door. A health and fitness center, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. Enjoy the New York skyline from our waterfront and various parks. Manhattan is just one path stop away or a quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. Tall screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Looking to visit? Stay at the Westin or Marriott Hotel. For more information, visit us at NewportNJ.com. Make lasting memories to cherish forever. It's incredible. It's you, Newport. Live like you want. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunnelly Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunnelly Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. County View live at a cut. And as I mentioned a few moments ago, today I'm joined with Jersey City mayoral candidate, Musab Ali. Musab, thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me, John. So obviously a lot of shocking election results here last night. Uh, I don't, an understatement, of course. But yeah, presidential, as I said, uh, just before you arrived, I mean, every pundit, every pollster, every guy or girl that gets paid nationally to analyze elections told us it's going to be too close to call, Bush versus Gore type scenario. Evidently, that's not what happened at all. Just any thoughts? Well, I, I think, one, it goes to show uh, the way that legacy media is sort of being perceived in this country, right? People's distrust in the media. Um, I think polling also, like I think pollsters missed uh, the same way that they missed in um, 2016. I think there's a big question of like, you know, how do we accurately gauge, um, especially how young people are feeling about this election. I mean, overwhelmingly, the shift in the Republican Party has now come amongst young men. And I think there's a big question of like, how do we capture that data? 
Yeah, and you know, you bring up an interesting point. Like, you're one of the few people in this game that's significantly younger than me. And, like, how do you, I mean, you know, you're a smart guy, of course, you're a Harvard graduate, but like you and your friends, your family, like people in your age group, like how do you typically consume media? Well, I think so much of media is now social media, right? Like, I mean, you're getting information from Twitter, you're getting information from Instagram, you're getting information from Facebook. Um, and I think a lot of people are, you know, they see legacy media as bias, right? I mean, I th and I think Trump sort of started this wave around, starting in 2016, right? The idea of fake news, right? Like, what does fake news mean? Uh, but I think for a long time, I mean, people have been primed in these echo chambers. Um, and now, like with social media, it's sort of accelerated, right? So like the stuff that you and I might see, like we just keep hearing the same stuff over and over again because our algorithm like, is like pushing that to us. Um, but somebody else is seeing something completely different. Uh, and we may not even understand that for them, like their whole universe is a universe where of course everybody's gonna vote Trump. Um, I mean, I had some people who I think perceived that the Green Party was gonna get a significant amount of votes. I mean, I think she ended up with like 0.4% of it. But again, it's just an algorithm that they have where they're kind of stuck in this echo chamber. Yeah, like a lot of people thought Jill Stein was gonna be this, you know, really awful spoiler. And obviously she had really no impact on the right. race at all. But uh, look, we could talk Trump for hours. We're not gonna do that. Let's go to the locals. So, you know, the Board of Ed, of course, where you uh, served and were the president, you know, we had uh, quite an upset. The first time since 2020 where the JCEA could not pull off that clean sweep and actually they lost two or three. And you'd have to think that if the other t uh, side ran a full ticket, they probably would have swept. Uh, of course, we'll never know, but what do you think about that result? Matt Schneider, Tia Rezabola, and uh, Trustee Natalia Iofi re-elected. Yeah, look, I, I think it's a reflection of what has happened on the Board of Ed, right? I think there has been dysfunction that's existed on the Board of Education. Uh, I think that a lot of people, especially parents, have felt unheard, right? I mean, I think back, I mean, the moment that I immediately thought about was the moment where PTA sent a letter to the Board of Education president. And they said, look, like we would like to see excessive decorum. We would like to see something changed. Um, and the Board of Ed president responded with, you know, duly noted, nothing's gonna change, right? And so when you sideline a group of people and you make them feel like a minority and you feel like they're unheard, I mean, they are gonna come out and say, look, like we deserve to be heard and we deserve to be, you know, have, have a seat at the table. And I think that's what happened with parents. Um, you know, when I ran, it was this idea that like young people didn't have a voice, right? That there should be a student member at the Board of Education. I think some of these parents felt the same way that, you know, there aren't people who are representing their interests. So how come you decided not to endorse any, any candidates here? Look, I, I think it was a very, very tight race. Um, and I was friendly with a lot of these candidates. Um, quite frankly, I couldn't get behind all the people who were running on the union ticket. I think particularly running people um, for re-election on a board where I think you need a lot of change to happen, it didn't make sense for me uh, to endorse the union ticket. Um, but look, I've been supportive of a lot of, of anyone who sort of reaches out. I called the three candidates who won, um, have good relationships with all of them. Uh, and look, I, I wish them the best of luck moving forward. I mean, the Board of Ed is a really tough job, uh, probably the toughest job in Jersey City, right? I mean, you got uh, a billion dollar budget now, um, you're unpaid, uh, and you're sort of serving, you know, 30,000 students in Jersey City. Yeah, no, it's definitely thankless work, to put it lightly. Now, um, actually, going back to the National for just a moment, you were obviously, and still are, outspoken about your views on Gaza, you know, talked about the uncommitted movement and such. So, you know, a lot of people were curious and have brought up to uh, my attention and wanted me to bring up, like, so did you vote for the vice president in this? I did. I, I voted for Kamala Harris. Um, but I will say to you, I think there's a lot of people who are really frustrated uh, with the Democratic Party, right? Uh, but to me, look, I see it, it's a two-party system, and you sort of have to pick a side uh, that you're going to build within. But I think it's clear the Democratic Party has failed across the board, right? We lost across multiple minority groups. Uh, we lost young voters. Um, and, I and I think there has to be a really hard reset, right? And I think Democrats need to understand, like, the messaging that they've been giving is not working, right? Yeah. I mean, it's a question, like, what do Democrats stand for? And I think particularly towards the last weeks of the race, you saw Democrats shift more towards the right, sort of embracing, like, look, we are actually just the same as Republicans when it comes to some of these issues. Um, and look, and we look at the result, right? Like, people were not excited to go and vote uh, for Vice President Harris. Yeah, I mean, on that point, you know, I've said to a lot of people, friends, family members, acquaintances, like, yeah, like the, the end, last leg of the campaign, if you will, the messaging seemed to be aimed at moderate Republicans. And when you're the Democratic nominee, I don't know why you would do that. I just don't know where that came from. But again, we could be here for hours on this. Well, I'll just say, I'll just say one more point on that. I think what's really fascinating, obviously, all the data hasn't come in. It looks like Trump actually got about the same amount of votes as he did in the past but Kamala got tens of millions of votes less than Biden did, right? So it's not so much that, you know, people completely shifted their views. It's that also the voters that traditionally come out for Democrats or came out in the past, like just, they just didn't come out this time. Yeah, no, that's a good assessment as well. Musab, don't go anywhere. Folks, don't go anywhere either. We're just going to take a quick break. We'll be right back.
No one plans on heart disease, but everyone should have a plan for it. We help patients of all lifestyles and medical histories plan for healthy hearts. We offer convenient screenings without judgment, hundreds of preventive programs, and women's heart specialists. And we're the largest cardiac surgery program in New Jersey. Make plans for a healthy heart with RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River offers a quality of life you deserve in one of our many high-rise towers. With amenities such as the on-site Newport Path, light rail, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Kohl's, JCPenney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams and Acme Supermarket are just outside your front door. A health and fitness center, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. Enjoy the New York skyline from our waterfront and various parks. Manhattan is just one path stop away or quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. Tall screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Looking to visit? Stay at the Westin or Marriott Hotel. For more information, visit us at NewportNJ.com. Make lasting memories to cherish forever. It's incredible. It's you. Newport. Live like you want. That's at Gaudi View Live, and I've got John Arhitis. I'm still here with Jersey City mayoral candidate Musa Ali. So as far as the implications on 25, obviously Councilman Solomon and Council President Waterman back the Four Stronger Schools team and Council County Commissioner Bill O'Day back the Education Matters. Uh, you, know, I've been, you know, as we just discussed, you talked about why you didn't uh, decide to put your support behind anyone. What do you think the implications there, if anything? Look, I think uh, there's a big question mark on what happens on the Board of Education election next year, right? Um, I think people who are running for mayor, I think should be supporting people who are gonna run for Board of Education this coming cycle because the mayor has to work with the Board of Education very closely. I think part of what really hurt me on the Board of Education was that I felt like City Hall uh, and the Board of Ed didn't have a great relationship. And I tried to create part of that. Um, we had a joint meeting with the City Council. That was one of our initiatives to have conversations between us of saying, look, like we both collectively control over $1.5 billion. Like mm -hmm. as city bodies, we should have conversations about what are we doing and how are we building together. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean, mean that the mayor has to control the Board of Education, uh, but they should have good relationships with everyone who's there. So I think making sure that, you know, Tia and Matt have people who are supporting them and making sure that Natalia knows that there's people who are running that can, can have conversations with her. Um, I think that's the most important thing. All right. Now, uh, you know, specifically on 25, I mean, obviously, Election Day was yesterday, and, uh, you know, you had a team out, and you were out to give it some literature for 25. Uh, to my knowledge, you didn't distribute anything about the presidential or, you know, yesterday's ballot, so correct me if I'm wrong, but, you know, why did you decide to, to do that? Like, what was the strategy there? I mean, look, in, in Hudson County, uh, you know, we knew what was going to happen on the presidential cycle. Uh, like, I don't think it was going to be surprising to any of us, although I was surprised with, with the sort of margin of victory that, that Kamala had, not nearly, I think, what we expected it to be. Um, but to me, I, I think it's important to reach voters uh, who are going to vote for president and let them know, like, look, local elections really impact your future. Um, so it was really important to me to, to sort of get a message out there to them, say, look, like, we're here and we're representing what's happening in, in the next election cycle, but we happen to have conversations about what's happening today as well. Um, my canvassers who talk to people in very much were helping direct into the polls. Um, I think there was also somewhat of a, a staffing issue when it came to the people who were omnipresent, right? Like you didn't see as many people out today, out yesterday at all. Um, usually on a, on a presidential cycle, you would expect to see a lot of people on the corners. In some places, I think our volunteers were the only people who were there. Yeah, so you touched on this on uh, X, most people still call it Twitter, but uh, you touched on the HCDO really didn't have much of a presence yesterday anywhere. Jersey City, Hoboken, Bayo, North Hudson just didn't seem to have much. I mean, what's your feelings on that? Are your guesses, estimates, whatever? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's, uh, I think there has to be some sort of conversation that HCDO is having with itself as well, right? Like, what is the future of the Democratic Party here in Hudson County? Um, when the HCDO is unable to rile up volunteers for the most consequential election, um, like, what does that say about who we are and what we're doing and what we're building here? Um, and I think, you know, a lot of what the HCDO sometimes speaks to is old Jersey City, like a Jersey City that isn't here anymore. I mean, if you look at the data, Jersey City over the last, you know, seven years, it's like 65, 70% of the residents have moved in in that time frame. And so what does that mean in terms of the conversations we're having with them and how are we drawing them into the Democratic Party and strengthening what our party is? True. Now, uh, you know, obviously 
we're about a year out now. Uh, people are thinking about the primary already. Uh, but you know, your race is, again, about a year away. So when people are looking at you know, your team and your fundraising, compared to you know, Councilman Solomon, Commissioner O'Day, former Governor McGreevy, why would you say that you're still a contender here? I think for us, uh, you know, a year away, a lot can happen. Um, but I think what we've demonstrated is there is grassroots supports that exist. Um, when I talk to young people, I think people under misunderstand that the median age in Jersey City is 34 years old. Um, and so I think I talk to the median resident in Jersey City at a much closer rate uh, than some of the people who you know, don't necessarily understand what their lives are like, right? What are the things that are important to them? Um, and I think it's important to appeal to all demographics, but I think specifically when you're thinking about the presidential cycle and comparing that to what's happening here locally, you know, when it came to Joe Biden, people were saying, look, he's too old. Like he doesn't understand what the country's going through. And I think Jersey City is, skews much younger than the country does in terms of who it is, what the demographic looks like. Um, and I think the reality is like, you need to have conversations with the old and the new, right? Um, and I'm the only candidate that I think really understands what it is to be from Jersey City, where I've been here my whole life, but also understands this new Jersey City, because I have a lot of friends who are moving in who are these new residents who are coming in and living in these high rises. And so I think you need someone who understands both parts of Jersey City to really be that voice that brings Jersey City together. All right. And uh, no city council candidates, uh, running mates announced yet. When, when can we expect uh, you to start rolling out some names? So we have a couple of names ready. Uh, but for me, I didn't want to do anything before the presidential cycle happened. Uh, but you can anticipate starting in January, we're going to start to roll out some candidates. All right. And you're feeling pretty good about your ability to get a council majority as it stands today? Well, look, I think anyone who becomes the mayor comes in with six seats, right? If you, you run your three at large, if you win, your three at large guaranteed to win. And then within the six wards, you assume you win half the city, you're guaranteed to get, guaranteed to get three seats. Um, I sometimes think we should have a breakup between like when does the mayor run and the council runs to have more of a check and balance. Right, like Hoboken does. Like Hoboken does, yeah. But I think, look, the way that Jersey City's charter is currently set up, I don't think there's any mayor who comes in who doesn't have a council majority. All right, I, I could see that. And any closing thoughts? Look, I just think, uh, you know, for a lot of us, it's a really painful day. Um, you know, there's a lot of fear and anxiety in terms of what's happening. And I think a lot about what Trump has said about Jersey City in the past, right? I mean, he's taking direct shots at our city and our community. I remember him, you know, the reason I first ran for office was him talking about thousands of Muslims, thousands of people cheering on the rooftops of Jersey City during 9-11. Um, and that's what inspired me to, to get into public service, to like pursue this. Um, and I think this sort of rerun of 2016, it, it, it's tough. It's tough to watch that. Got it. Hussab, thanks for coming in. Always a pleasure. Thank you, John. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, Jersey City, Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. Consumer Carpets, 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights, your one-stop store for residential and commercial floor treatments. Carpeting, linoleum, tiles, laminates, hardwood floors, area rugs, remnants, all major brands, all in stock. Free estimates, same-day installation. Consumer Carpets, it's savings, selection, installation. Credit cards and debit cards accepted. Financing available. Consumer Carpets, price to fit your budget, installation to fit your schedule. On the net at ConsumerCarpets.com. Consumer Carpets, Jersey City, 201-792-2712. Comprehensive health care is here, here, and here. RWJ Barnabas Health is healing, enhancing, and investing in Hudson County with its two newest locations, Hoboken and Exchange Place. Within walking distance or accessible by mass transit, our locations combine convenience with primary and specialty care, including cardiology, women's health, orthopedics, cancer care, and more. Let's be healthy together. Anna Pinto Properties, Jersey City, shaping the workplace with state-of-the-art office spaces and addresses your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment, adjacent to all modes of transportation with on-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. Call 201-521-9000 or visit online at panapintodevelopment.com. Panapinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone.
That's at Gaudi View Live at Gut Chat, our hiatus. So let's again talk about the electoral results up and down the ballot before we get into uh, this really sad story with Hoboken. So, like, first of all, again, uh, as you just heard with myself and Musab Ali as we were having a conversation, I mean, Trump, by modern day standards, I mean, this is just a blowout. I mean, right now, the Associated Press has it 277, 224. It looks like they've already won, he's already won six of seven swing states. Uh, the seventh one uh, remains uncalled, but it's uh, definitely not the result that anybody was being told. So certainly interesting. And then super interesting is that New Jersey, where the Democratic nominee almost always wins by like a catastrophic number, uh, at least 15, 20 points, usually only five points here in the Garden State. So certainly something that we're not used to seeing. Clearly, a lot of Democratic strongholds went to Trump. So we'll leave that there. And uh, we're expecting, actually, one more point, uh, you know, Vice President Kamala Harris will be doing a concession speech in about four hours. So let's see uh, what she has to say. But, you know, obviously this thing is over, despite the fact that we were told that this was probably going to take a few days to tabulate. Now, in a race that was called, I mean, the polls closed probably about 8 o'clock. Uh, and Andy Kim, who was the U.S. representative, the congressman of the 3rd District, uh, they called the race for him at like 8.15. Very, very decisive in that he defeated Curtis Peshaw, the Republican nominee. Though if you look at the uh, AP results, Associated Press, it actually wasn't as definitive as some people thought it could be. It was about eight and a half points. So, you know, not really in flux, but a lot of people thought that could be 15, 20 points. We saw that in some polls. So clearly you saw the Trump effect there. And then even with our congressman, U.S. Representative Rob Menendez, he was reelected. You know, of course, we talked here extensively. You remember we had that really exciting debate between him and Hoboken Mayor Ravi Bala in the primary. And now this time around, you know, it's basically what most people would write off with all due respect as a token Republican candidate, Anthony Valdez. You know, we had him in here a couple weeks ago. We had him talk about his vision, what he would like to see in the 8th District. And, uh, you know, it ended up being... Not, again, not incredibly close, but Menendez won by about 25 points. And in Hudson County, you're used to seeing like 50, 60 point wins. So again, the Trump effect clearly went up and down the ballot. Valdez, you know, I guess some would say miraculously got like 35%, maybe even 36 or 37, depending where the final numbers fall. So he actually did have the worst night. Again, Menendez won very comfortably. It was never in doubt, but but it's said and done, he might not have broken 60%. So definitely something that was an interesting result. But, uh, you know, I got to speak with the congressman as well as New Jersey Democratic State Committee Chair Leroy Jones earlier in the day, as many of you saw. And they were pretty confident, optimistic about the 8th District, of course. But uh, interestingly, in the neighboring 7th District, which was getting national attention, where you had Sue Altman trying to unseat United States Representative Tom Kane, that it didn't end up being super close. I mean, you know, Menendez and Jones thought that Altman had a really good shot, and uh, Jones actually pretty called the race for her, but did end up going down that way. Uh, Cade won by about five or six points, uh, much larger margin than what he defeated then U.S. Representative Tom Malinowski in 2022. So that's interesting. And, of course, they were both optimistic about the vice president, and, you know, we saw what happened there. Now... Also in the Mile Square City, we had that red control referendum. I mean, we didn't talk about it a whole heck of a lot. It was kind of an odd campaign in that you didn't really see a lot happening from either side, at least not in the public eye, right? Like, nope, there wasn't like a ton of social media. They weren't doing a ton of press. And it, it was kind of a question mark of where this was going, though I could see and I, could, and I heard that the vote no movement on this referendum was pretty aggressive. And they had a lot of people walking. And, you know, some people took offense to Jersey City folks like Councilman Solomon and like Assembly Candidate Katie Brennan coming in. But whatever the case may be, whatever the impact was there, clearly it wasn't close. It was about a three to one margin, according to the preliminary tallies from the Hudson County Clerk's Office, defeated overwhelmingly. And, uh, you know, I guess in a sense, it really wasn't that surprising that was the result because you had a lot of people from the administration and from the governing body putting their weight behind this. You know, Hoboken Mayor Robbie Bala was quite outspoken. Fifth Ward Councilman Phil Cohen was up out in front of this. Second Ward Councilman Tiffany Fisher. And also, can't forget the council members at large, Emily Jabour, Jim Doyle, and Joe Quintero. So, you know, with that, uh, 
you know, just really a, a, a crushing defeat for the Mile Square Taxpayers Association. Uh, you know, they unveiled this proposal in March. They pressed forward after having petitions deemed to be defective in May, and then in August, the council rejected a compromise before changing the phrasing of the referendum statement itself. I mean, there's a lot to say about why this was a little complicated and confusing for some, but in simplest terms, this is what approving the referendum would have done. Landlords could have raised rents to market rate after any vacancy as long as they pay $2,500 per unit, which would go into Hoboken's Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Now, politicos insisted that this would effectively end rent control, while the MSTA and their supporters were steadfast that it would actually create more housing in the long run. Clearly, the average voter wasn't buying that. They weren't into that. It didn't go very far. So when we come back, you're going to talk about this uh, tragedy in Hoboken. Uh, not looking forward to it, but going to do it. And uh, we're going to close on that. So we'll see you guys in a few minutes. No one plans on heart disease, but everyone should have a plan for it. We help patients of all lifestyles and medical histories plan for healthy hearts. We offer convenient screenings without judgment, hundreds of preventive programs, and women's heart specialists. And we're the largest cardiac surgery program in New Jersey. Make plans for a healthy heart with RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River offers a quality of life you deserve in one of our many high-rise towers. With amenities such as the on-site Newport Path, light rail, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Kohl's, JCPenney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams and Acme Supermarket are just outside your front door. A health and fitness center, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. Enjoy the New York skyline from our waterfront and various parks. Manhattan is just one pass stop away or quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Looking to visit? Stay at the Westin or Marriott Hotel. For more information, visit us at NewportNJ.com. Make lasting memories to cherish forever. It's incredible. It's you, Newport. Live like you want. Hudson County View live on Uncut, John Arhidas. So first, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about the Jersey City Board of Education race. Since 2020, as I mentioned when I was just sitting down with Musab, they had won 12 straight seats, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, all in a row, clean sweeps for the JCEA, opposition for the most part did not much of a pulse. Now, we had this for Stronger Schools team that came out and it wasn't even a full ticket. You know, these are three, three year terms on the board and uh, this is normal, but the point is they only ran a two person ticket for whatever reason, I'm not familiar with the backstory to be perfectly honest with you, but that was Matthew Schneider, that was Tia Rezabala, and they both won decisively. And interestingly, they went to Wardy Councilman James Solomon's uh, watch party. Of course, he's a candidate for mayor. And Solomon came out for them a couple weeks ago, as again, I already mentioned, Council President Joyce Waterman did too. But uh, just some quick remarks from him. I think there was a lot of sentiment of parents not being heard and just not feeling like they're part of the decision-making process. And I think they sent a message tonight. It is awesome. We are very thankful for the Jersey City community. Thank you. So, you know, to take, pick off two out of three seats is definitely big. And, you know, Councilman Solomon was, of course, quite delighted with the result. And, you know, the Jersey City Education Association and uh, also County Commissioner Bill O'Day, Craig Guy, uh, Danny Rivera, everyone who endorsed Education Matters are going to have to re rethink things heading into the next calendar year. So with that, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm still reeling. It hurts to even think about, let alone talk about, but uh, Hoboken Council President Jen Giottino was uh, not just a friend of the show, but a friend for me. So gonna try to do her justice to the best of my ability here. You know, was really, really sad to report yesterday, just before the polls closed that Jen had passed away. Uh, just 52 years old, uh, you know, a mother, a wife and uh, a great community advocate in addition to being a representative on that Mile Square City Council. So here's the statement that 
The press received from her husband, Joe, and it said, I am heartbroken to share that my beloved wife, Jen, the love of my life, mother of our three children, passed away suddenly. She was not only an incredible mother, but also a dedicated public servant who cared deeply about this community. Jen's unwavering commitment, kindness, and passion touched so many lives here at Hoboken. We are devastated by our loss and ask for privacy for our families as we try to navigate this difficult time. Thank you for your understanding and for keeping Jen in your thoughts and prayers. So, as I mentioned, that as many of you know, she was first elected in 2011 on then Mayor Dawn Zimmer's ticket, was re-elected again in 15 and 19 pretty easily. And in 19, well, 19 was actually kind of close. Zimmer and her successor, Mayor Rami Bala, endorsed a candidate against Giottino, but she still won. And then in 2023, she actually secured two-thirds, about 66% of the vote, when running against two opponents. And this is particularly remarkable, one, when one of them was endorsed by Mayor Rami Bala, and two, this was seeking her fourth term, which most council people at Hoboken don't do. So that's quite an accomplishment. And, uh, you know, as anybody that knew Jen knows, she had a stellar record of being responsive to constituents and was known to genuinely enjoy hitting the doors during campaign season. And that's what made her so tough to beat. And, uh, you know, she was just beloved in Hoboken and beyond. And, uh, you know, again, she wasn't just somebody that I talked to about politics. She was someone that I enjoyed sitting down with having a drink, having a meal, just talking about life, talking about our families, talking about music. And, you know, back in 2016, 2017, when, you know, my name, my voice wasn't as prominent as it is now, she was still just a delight to talk to. She welcomed me with open arms. And uh, to me, that's worth its weight in gold. So, you know, I have to put that out there. And uh, also have to mention that we heard from Mayor Robbie Bala and, uh, he said it was with a heavy heart that we boarded the, sa- the sudden and incredibly tragic passing of Council President Jen Giottino. Jen's dedication to our community will never be forgotten. Her kindness, humility, and quiet determination made her a cherished figure whose impact will be felt for generations to come. There are no words to describe the sense of loss we were all feeling. Jen was a leader in our community and a fighter for all of us. Hoboken has lost a bright light. She will be missed deeply. I hope our community can come together in her memory, embrace the Giottino family with prayer and support, respect their privacy during this difficult time. We also heard from Governor Phil Murphy, and uh, he said that Jen Giottino was in public service for all the right reasons and noted that him and First Lady Tammy Murphy are heartbroken to hear the news. Finally, Hudson County Executive Craig Guy, who was a a good friend of Giottino, offered uh, condolences as well. I'm deeply saddened to learn of the tragic passing of Jen Giottino. Jen was a true public servant. She dedicated her life to helping the residents of Hoboken, was a leader in her community. She was a devoted wife and mother. All of Hudson County sends sincere condolences to Jen's family. So, uh, yeah, very, very sad, obviously. My heartfelt condolences to the Giottino family. Jen, we're going to miss you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, with that, uh, we're going to call it a week. See you next time.